round two fight. All cheesiness aside, this is part two of um, my digital portrait painting with the subject, the lovely uh, Stephen, um, who's very near and dear to my heart. In the intermission between my two uh, videos, between recording sound for the previous clip and this one, I decided to hop on YouTube and actually harness the power of the internet to figure out how the hell I'm supposed to say the company that makes the brand of tablet that I've been using for the past, I don't know, 10 or so years. So, according to Joe on the um, YouTube channel with the jaunty ear piercing, it is Wacom, like Waka Waka. Wacom. Yeah. I kind of wish I hadn't looked it up because it sounds kind of stupid to me. I, uh, not surprisingly prefer the way that I say it. And so now that I know, though, I have to say it right. So, Wacom. Wacom Cintiq. Learn something new every day. So, back to what you are actually here for to see me paint some stuff and hopefully explain it without boring you to tears or, you know, making you want to find out where I live and shoot me in the face. I am currently working on eyeball number two. Um, like I previously mentioned in the first video, but I will reiterate to kill some time because an hour is a very long time. I am working on layer three of three layers that I currently have. I've got the base color, which is the um, kind of mid-tone of the skin, that uh, orangey brown color, the tan color that you see. On top of that, I have the rough sketch that I made at the very beginning of video one. And then on top of that, I have um, the colors that I'm adding, which are oh, kind of intended to be laying on top of the sketch. You could technically, I mean, obviously you could do whatever you want, like I said before, but you could really dumb this down to one layer. Um, it's probably advisable, especially if you're working on a massively huge file and your computer is, um, you know, having a baby trying to crank it out um, you definitely want to minimize your number of layers but I wasn't so sure about the background color I knew I wanted to do something like tannish but that's why I kept it separate um, and then I wasn't sure if I wanted to play around with the roughs later or have it for some crazy unbeknownst to me reason so um, I kept it like that but you could conceivably do it all in one layer I'm getting a little more confident as far as trusting myself to be able to fix any screw-ups it's like you know just paint over it you idiot like that's what you do if it was oil or acrylic so um yeah uh thing about the thing that i that made me choose this reference image is that um the eyes his eyes in it were beautiful they you know really um really connected with with the with the f viewer and uh, i i thought that was really important because this is, you know, a fairly important portrait to me. Um, so I really wanted to focus a lot of attention on getting the eyes to be, uh, I don't know, really, like, really looking at you. And I guess I'm, as, I'm, as I'm looking at the video now, with this particular zoom, it's kind of creepily looking at the eyes. But um, so I don't know. I was really happy with that. Uh, it's funny when you're trying to show like his eyes are kind of like a bluey green um that sort of you know that sort of eye color that sometimes changes depending on what he's wearing sort of thing and um you know when you think i'm gonna draw someone's blue eyes in this portrait you're like okay let me color pick some blue you know but it's really interesting when you're trying to translate something from a photograph especially this photograph was taken with re in really in intense sunlight so it's got a a lot of shadows and b you get you know, a lot of um, interestingly saturated points. You get, you know, some some desaturated stuff that's in shadow. So it's, you know, to convey that his eyes are kind of a bluey color. The color that I actually was using was a very gray, um, like a very gray, like blackish cerulean sort of um, desaturated blue. So you just have to. I don't know, kind of go with the flow and, and reference what you're what you see in your photograph but obviously color picking from a photo unfortunately I wish it was different but it doesn't really help you that much because um, I mean if you're going to try it you could conceivably you know maybe do like a 5x5 five five or a 10x10 10 10 or whatever the larger um, color pick area is so that you might actually be able to grab a decent usable color but for the most part colors um, 
in photographs, they do not translate to your painting. So you really have to kind of play it by ear and look at the color in relation to what what's around it. Like if I try to use like a heavily saturated blue for his eyes, it would look ridiculous next to um, the dark browns and the, the purpley browns and the pinkish browns and the, you know, whatever that I'm using for his skin tone. So pay attention to that and um, play around with it. Like I said before, if you're not comfortable with your color picking skills, use different layers. Like it's so easy to, I, it's technically fairly easy to adjust colors if everything's on the same layer, but it's ridiculously easy to adjust colors when everything's on different layers. So I don't know, play to your strengths. Uh, and you know, don't, don't be, um, too restrained by your weaknesses, but at least acknowledge the points where you could use improvement and, you know, try to do the best with that sort of stuff. So I just finished his right eyebrow, I guess his technically his left eyebrow, but the eyebrow on the right side of the screen. Um, I'm just tweaking it, um, adding some, some layers of, of color. Um, I'm still using the same brush that I you know, pretty much used throughout the whole thing. I just, I made it a lot smaller and actually um, raised the opacity to about uh, 60% and uh, up the flow to about 25 to do the little hairs. If you're using, you know, one of the typical tablets like the bamboo or graphite or whatever, like most people probably are because the Cintiq is ridiculously expensive and to me completely unjustifiable unless you do um, graphic design professionally or happen to wear money suits and um, you know wipe your butt with $20 bills then you would probably um, need to up your um, opacity or your flow a little bit more than what I'm talking about or maybe even lower it it just you know it all actually depends on um, the settings that you have um, set your tablet to and you can adjust those I know in on the Mac, it's under system settings, and you can actually change the the softness and the firmness of, of the pressure, and I'm sure there's somewhere on the PC to do that that I'm not aware of. So, um, I don't know. My rule of thumb is just play around with it. I would always recommend if you have a new tablet, or even if you've been using the same tablet for a while but not feeling like you're getting the most out of it, um, stop for a second and just evaluate it. Open up a blank, you know, Photoshop or whatever, GIMP, whatever you... Um, side paint tool whatever you happen to use document and just draw some lines and see you know get familiar with the level of pressure that's needed to give a good blend or to give a nice hard line um, if you do you know digital inking you know stuff like that like really familiarize yourself with your tools so that you can get better at using them you know and uh I don't know it's it's kind of your your arsenal so why not make sure that you're as equipped and familiar with it as possible so um you know i honestly don't know what to tell you about but i am not a how classically trained artist i've never really taken any classes i was kind of i don't want to say too lazy per se to do you know a graphic design degree but to an extent, I just did not feel like doing all of those um, labs. Like, it was, I saw my friends doing it and lugging their portfolios all over, you know, LSU's campus. And I was like, oh my God, that's a lot of work. So I did advertising instead. So if you actually go to art school and someone tells you something differently, if I, you know, mention something about color or about shape or about drawing and you're like, that's not what my teacher said, maybe listen to your teacher, not me, because I'm just some chick on YouTube who... Gen, you know, I, I'm genuinely trying to help, and if you know, I can answer any questions about how I do things. You know, I'd love to do it for you, but I am not the be-all, end-all of graphic design or you know, illustration by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, just a disclaimer, because you know, you might see some see me doing something and be like, "That girl's ridiculous." Well, that's you know, that's how I do it. If you have any, you know, constructive criticism or any um, tips on how I can do things better, I'd love to hear it. But if you're going to be shitty about it, well, I, I don't really care about your shitty elitist attitude. So there, there you have that. But um, when I am painting on top of a color that I already have down, sometimes it's really good to uh, play around with the mode of 
of your of your painting you can the overlay mode um, is usually really good if you're trying to make something a lot a little saturated or to uh, you know kind of blend with the colors that are underneath there multiply like I always mention I love multiply because it lets you kind of make everything darker darken is a darken or darker color or really good ones and same thing with lighter lighten and lighter color because then you're only um, you know when you're in darken mode you're only changing the color of something that happened to be lighter than the color that you're using that sounds really confusing but play around with it you know um, it's pretty cool like don't be afraid to switch the mode that you're using and though I never use it um, hell bust out the the saturate desaturate tool every now and again if you you know if you've got some good values down um, or some good colors down there and you want to change the value or you know um, play around with the tools that are in Photoshop I know there's some purists who are like that's cheating but if you want to get technical about it using Photoshop is kind of cheating you know what I mean like if you um, if you want to separate different forms of art or whatever to me it's all you know it's all art it's whatever makes you feel good and whatever lets you express kind of like the vision that you want to put out there I think that that's what you should use so if you are using smudge tool if you're hell if you're even grabbing a photo and you know putting a filter on it if that's your thing and it makes you happy knock yourself out but always be wary of copyright laws because um yeah that's not cool but if it's your own photo why not like who cares just I don't know do what makes you happy if it feels good do it um so anyway, back to, back from my hopeless meandering ramblings and onto um, what I'm actually doing here. I don't really have like a point that I always start from. I can't say that I always start on the nose or the ears or the eyes. I, I can't say that I always say the ears for last because I'm awful at them and I hate them. Um, I just, I really need to sit down one day with an anatomy book and just really get comfortable with the structure of the human ear but I cannot stand it and I'm awful at it and so I always say that for last but depending on I don't know what I'm going for how well I know the face or what my favorite feature is I might start with the nose or the eyes and kind of work my way out it really just depends um, so I haven't found any especially good starting point I don't know if that you know if any of you out there have some point that you feel like Oh, if I start with the nose, the face really is awesome. But if, you know, if I start with the eyes, then, you know, it's all downhill from there. Love to hear it, you know. Um, always down to hear that stuff. Uh, like I always do on the lips, I threw down a shockingly bright color. And it looks awfully ridiculous when you first put it down. You're like, holy crap, that's pink. But then you use the color, you color pick colors from the rest of his face, the dark shadow colors of his skin the highlights of the rest of the skin and by laying those other colors on top of the ridiculously red or pink color it really does bring the lips down into the skin color and make them look like part of the face and not like you have a man wearing lipstick so at first it, it can look a, a bit obnoxious but it gets there um with the lips especially with guys because they generally tend to not wear lipstick unless you know you're into that which is totally cool um, you want to make sure that you blend the um, at least one corner of the the bottom lip or the top lip um, you want to blend some of those edges really well with the skin to kind of almost look like um, there isn't that much of a delineation between the lip and the skin because that's you that's if you'll notice if you you know look really closely at pictures you always have that spot where the lip really really blends um, straight into the skin color so that making sure that you at least have one point where that happens where the colors kind of bleed over onto each other it really tones down the lip and um, makes it seem like part of the face um, I've got some really dark shadows playing on the lips because half of his face is in shadow but um, you know, on his left side, the screen right, you can see that bottom lip really blending into the skin, and I think that helps um, kind of bring the lips down to not look too crazy. Um, so yeah, I think I'm, I've hit my 15 minute mark on this one. I'm going to cut it off, and I will see you in part three.